Hello. Well, as you can see, <clears throat> it's al fresco time. The sun is shining. The sky is blue. Absolutely perfect. Let's begin. If um, you've managed to watch my uh, vlog called uh, Young and Foolish, uh, you will recall that um, <clears throat> I didn't get on particularly well with my uh, supervisor and I was always uh, looking for the opportunity uh, for the out which didn't occur very often but uh, every now and then internal courses uh, were organised and one could apply f uh, for them. One day reading the uh, notice boards there was one there that said aptitude testing will begin in two weeks time for commuter training only air traffic control personnel need, need apply. That's what well, that sounds good. Um, that would give me the opportunity of having um, a couple of days off from uh, from shift duty, which was uh, a bonus in those days because the shifts were quite horrendous uh, at the what was the Southern Air Traffic Control Centre, which was situated on the the north side of London Heathrow Airport. This is when Heathrow was a relatively young and inexperienced uh, international airport. However, that's another story. So I applied for this uh, particular aptitude testing and spent a couple of days um, being asked silly questions and all about if a man was found hanging in a room and there was only um, a pool of water, how did he hang himself? Um, and of course in my usual flippant way I said he was standing on a block of ice and lo and behold that was the correct answer. Uh, the other thing we had to do um, arithmetic calculations using uh, different bases uh, to the base 5, to the base 8, to the base 2 something which um, I was always uh, reasonably good at of course it was of absolutely no practical use at all at least it seemed that way to, uh, to me so went back on the shift duty and uh, a week went by and I received in the internal mail uh, a letter saying that I had been successful and I would be seconded uh, from the air traffic control centre uh, to the local university for a minimum period of uh, six months for commuter training. I said great, sounds great this. So off we went. Um, and started on this uh, commute, commuter training. Anyway, two weeks went by and I said, this is strange. I said, because commuter to me is all about travelling, people travelling back and forward. So I decided to pluck up enough courage to ask the guy, I said, what's all those uh, things and lectures got to do with commuter training? He said, you've got this wrong. He said, it's computer training. Well, of course, I had never heard of computer training, but I was about to find out all about computers in the next six months. Six months went by, qualified or passed out, uh, got my uh, certificate in uh, computer programming, etc., etc., and uh, was then further attached to the Air Traffic Control Experimental Unit which had just departed uh, from the London area and was now in situ on the south coast of England. So that was great. Sent down there, full allowances, uh, rent allowance, etc, etc, furniture removal allowance. It was absolute heaven. And of course, away from my old uh, adver adversity, my uh, superintendent, su sorry, supervisor. So that was the start of my um, life in computer programming within the air traffic control environment. The computer language that we used was the Elliott <coughs> 502 machine code. You must remember at this uh, time computers uh, were in a very early stage of development, certainly commercially, um, and it was only just about now when high-level languages were beginning to appear on the scene, um, such as Algol and COBOL 
uh, Fortran. They were the three of the well-known languages um, that were coming on, on the scene. But because um, this particular machine was built uh, to develop um, air traffic control systems, it was found desirable that uh, there should be a one-to-one -one relationship between the, um, the instruction set, which became very important because if you'd like to believe the physical size of storage on this machine was 32k. Now that's 32k words and the the size of the word on this machine was 20 bits which is very it was a very awkward um, size to use because normally the uh, words are, consist of a series of bytes. Um, so we, we had that problem initially to to counter. Um, eventually we went up to the ginormous size of 64k which was huge compared with what uh, we were used to. And of course one of the techniques that you had to use um, in using machine code language with uh, such a limited size of, of storage was you were swapping instructions in and out the whole time because you weren't the only one that was using the machine um, for your particular thing. And the uniqueness of this machine was that it worked on seven different levels. They were operating levels and the highest level was level one which was very seldom used. This was used for uh, tracing uh, subroutines and things like that. If, we, if you ever encountered the problem, which was very often, um, you would start using um, a level one trace, which in actual fact allowed what <coughs> pardon me one instruction one instruction to be obeyed and then there was a level break and all the level dumps were um, recorded and this was how you determined um, when things went wrong the second level um, was the one that uh, took the clock interrupts and of course that really is one of the mainstays in the operation of any computer is the internal clock. The other levels were um, obviously used for <coughs> stuff which was deemed to be of a lower priority um, in the particular system that you, <coughs> pardon me, <laughs> in the particular system you were building. Of course one of the main problems in machine code programming is it's not a written uh, not written in an English language. It's based on um, mathematics. So for example, um, 46 double dot 120 comma 3, what that really means is that if the accumulator is equal to zero, then you will jump in this program to address 120 of block 3 or whatever. So you can see or you can understand that uh, there was many problems. In fact, half the time you were fighting um, the vagaries of the machine. Um, and lots of people just couldn't uh, comprehend or couldn't really understand um, machine code programming. Uh, the other guys, like myself, who in actual fact became nutcases uh, because we would be found staring and laughing over a series of numbers and people just wouldn't understand what uh, you know why we were getting hysterical when the, all they could see was a list or a series or a, a line printer output of numbers after numbers it just didn't mean a thing but when you're actually into this um, it became uh, quite uh, or you became quite uh, obsessional in your desire uh, to beat the machine